Hello. I don't know if it's just the time of year or what it might be, but it, it seems to be kind of accelerator season. If you'll remember last week, I had just received the list of the 32 companies that were accepted into the Latino Founders Accelerator Program for 2024. You know, I was kind of discombobulated. <laughs> and so I was like, let's just wait till the end and I'll, I'll go through all the, all the company names so that you have everyone. This week, a little less discombobulated, but still another new Accelerator class to read out to you. This time around, it's the Built Oregon 2024 Accelerator Cohort. I have the list of the companies. Obviously, as a co-founder of Built, I got to talk to a lot of these folks. I just met them this week. Amazing group of people. You're going to love them, but I'm going to wait until the end of the episode to kind of read off all their names so you know who all of them are. And, uh, you know, they're probably ones I'll be tracking throughout the year. Who knows? Maybe I'll get a hat or two from the cohort that I can wear on the show, like my built hat. But let's just hold off until the end for those companies. Let's get in to the big story this week. And if I had to, if I had to key in on a theme for this week, it's going to be government and policy. No, wait. No, wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I know. I know. You're like, oh, no. Politics. More politics. But these are politics that are a little bit more capable of being influenced by you, closer to home kind of things that I think are important to startups and entrepreneurs and people building businesses for a variety of reasons. One, and I, I kind of talked about this in something that I wrote up, there was a long time in startups when I would I would have to like deal with policy or accommodate government rules. But it took me a really long time to figure out that you actually, as a founder, have the potential to, to influence policy and to make things work the way that works better for you as a founder or your company. And, and, and I never realized that. I thought it was just a game you had to play or something you had to put up with. And the reality is there's a, there's a middle ground. You can work on policy. You can work with government to make things better for everyone. And so that's why part of this government and policy thing is important because there's going to be an opportunity for you to do that to kind of like come together and think about policy. But first and foremost, there's a really great report, not great in the results, but great that it exists that just came out from Business Oregon. It's called our Innovation Index, and it's the 2024 version. Basically, what Business Oregon does is it takes this set of metrics that all 50 states and, and the District of Columbia use to kind of analyze in innovation in their particular regions, and then they kind of rank them against one another. And the new report came out. I read it. I was excited. Excited first and foremost because, A, I, I don't know if you've encountered this, but like Portland and Oregon don't do well with the kind of quantified metrics. Like we're, we're good with the anecdotal. Oh, we do fine with the anecdotal and the claims that we're the de facto hub of any number of types of businesses with the de facto hub of microbreweries or where the de facto hub of of donuts. All right, I don't know that we really say that, but you know what I mean? Like you hear it all the time that people are like, hey, I hear there's a startup community. How many startups are there? And you're like, there's some. And like, what does that mean? How many, how many startups is some? And you're like, well, there are quite a few. Yeah, but can you give me a number? No. Because we don't, I don't know if it's our aggressive humility where we're like, hey, we, we don't want to, we don't really want to brag. We don't want to talk about that. Uh, let somebody else tell you about that. Or if it's just that we don't, we don't like kind of like tracking that over time. I don't know what it is. I'm equally guilty of it. That's not, I'm not casting judgment on anyone. I'm, I'm saying I'm bad at it too. 
I wish I had more time to kind of focus on it and provide those metrics, but <laughs> by way of saying, as I completely digress and, and go off the rails, all by way of saying this innovation index is a really good indicator of what's going on in the state of Oregon, and the numbers are not good. Now, at first blush, Oregon looks like it's doing pretty well. It looks like it's in the, you know, top 10 states in terms of innovation until you kind of start peeling back those layers of the onion and realize that Oregon's not really doing great across the board. We're doing okay across the board, which makes us look like we're doing good when you, when you tally everything up, but we're definitely not, you know, since we're in the middle of the Olympics now, we're definitely not standing on the podium by any means. Why am I telling you about this? I'm telling you about this because I think it's really important that we start to quantify these things about what's happening here. I think it's important that we provide those comparisons to see what other states are doing or who's excelling in other areas. And I just think it's really important to kind of quantify what's happening in Oregon and what it has the potential to be. Now, I'm not going to ask you to read the entire thing. It's a quick read, well-written, very approachable. Uh, you know, there's, <laughs> there's some graphs in there where you're like, oh, we're doing great. And then you read the copy below it and you're like, oh, that was completely misleading. But aside from that, this is the one key takeaway phrase I want you to retain and to think about. Even if you don't read any of the rest of the report, this is the most important kind of like summary of what this report entails. And that is, overall, Oregon is an innovative state with distinct, well-rounded strengths, a jack of all trades, and notably, a master of none. However, this iteration of the Innovation Index points to a significant number of areas, opportunity, where Oregon's strengths are being threatened and not keeping pace with peer states. The results from this index should open our eyes to the need for greater investment in commercialization, the quality of the business environment, and the skills talent necessary for our industries to stay competitive. All by way of setting up the next part of the government and policy part, and that is we have a very special visitor coming to town next week. He's done a ton of work with entrepreneurship, with small business, with startups. He's a guy named Victor Huang. Uh, you may know Victor from his book, The, the Rainforest, which talks about how the ecology of a rainforest should kind of match the, the ecology of a startup ecosystem or an entrepreneurial ecosystem. Uh, he spent some time at the Kaufman Foundation, which uh, if you're not familiar with the Kaufman Foundation, if you're not familiar with the Kaufman Foundation, they made hu huge investments in supporting entrepreneurs throughout the United States and, and giving money to entrepreneur support organizations. They're really the ones who put the energy behind the phrase ecosystem builder because they recognize that no one does this in a vacuum. In order for people to survive and thrive, you need a whole ecosystem of support for entrepreneurs. So Victor was a huge part of that. Now he runs an organization called Right to Start. And Right to Start works on policy at all levels of government to help ensure that entrepreneurs and startups are getting the type of policy and clearance that they need to do the work they're going to do. Because as we all know, small business and startups result in more job creation than the largest corporations in the world. He's a huge proponent of that. You know, I've talked to Victor before. I'm like, hey, you should come hang out with us in Portland and see what's going on. And and I wasn't that convincing, but apparently other people were because he's coming next week. He'll be here Wednesday, August 7th. You're invited to attend. It's free. You get lunch out of it. You get the opportunity to chat with your peers. You get to hear from Victor, chat with some more of your peers. So uh, an afternoon of activity with Victor Huang of Right to Start and your and your peers in the community to kind of discuss opportunities for policy or places we should be talking to our representatives and in an election year it's always a good time to be thinking about how you can influence policy and engage 
with politicians for, for future activity in terms of that policy. If that's of interest to you, please get get registered for that event because I'm sure space is limited. And like I said, you get lunch. You get free lunch. There is such a thing as a free lunch and time to hang out with Victor Huang. So check that out. Look, I'm I'm not always going to talk about policy and those kind of things. I will I will talk about startups and other things, but in order to get that stuff, you you should subscribe. So would you do that, please? Cool. Thanks. I don't know about you, but right now I'm sitting at a desk and I'm willing to bet that you, you too, may be sitting at a desk, probably pretending to do work and, but, but you're not really, you're listening to this, with, which is fine. Actually being informed about your community and the startups in your community, it should be part of work. It's educational. You're doing research on what's happening. And look, you just learned about all this policy stuff. So I take that back. You are probably sitting at your desk doing work, which involves watching this video or listening to this podcast, whatever it is you're doing. You're here. You you have a desk. But I think you could have an even better desk. I think that because our friends over at Grove Made have developed this amazing desk. It's a sit stand desk. So, uh, you know, uh, what, what do they call that? It sit stand desk. I don't They, you know, the desk, you can rise up and lower depending on how you want to be engaged in that desk, but it's like immaculately designed, uh, has all kinds of interesting adaptations and compartments and, and things you can add on to it. Adjustable desk, adjustable. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, the reason I'm mentioning it is because Grove Made has this special place in my heart. Ken Tamita, awesome, just a great guy. It was one of those companies that really opened my eyes to how creativity, how design could be influenced not only by the way we work, but the technology we choose to use day in and day out. And that all came from GroveMade's original product was a bamboo casing for the iPhone. Just simple, simple, elegant case for your iPhone made out of bamboo. And then they partnered with another local company in Portland, Maple XO, huge fan, love Lindsay Joe and the work they do over there. And uh, if you know, no, they, they take skateboards, use skateboards, broken skateboards, and they recycle them into products like jewelry and planters. And in a, in a collaboration with Grove made, they made an iPhone case, a wooden iPhone case. And yet again, I'm like, there are these really creative people making physical products that are inspired by technology. And that's, that's how this desk feels. It's like, form and function and elegance and inspiration and creativity and, and all those kind of things. Like I just love seeing the way Grove Maid's team thinks about problems. I, I love seeing how they're inspired by these kind of things. And so all, all by way of saying this is not sponsored at all. I just love Grove Maid. I love Maple XO. I love Portland startups and I love people here in town who commit to a craft and the creativity of that craft. And Grove Made is definitely one of those companies. So all I'm saying is if you're in the market for a desk, check out that Grove Made desk. It's pretty sweet. And if you are a technology worker with like the laptop and the keyboard and the things and the stuff, it's specifically designed for you. So and you might want to check that out. All I'm saying, you need a new desk. And I, I believe you deserve a new desk. So if you're in the market for that new desk, check out Grove Made and their awesome new Grove Made desk. Okay, that was kind of almost like a segue. You know how I like the segues. So Grove Made, consumer product, physical object. Who else in our world deals with physical objects and consumer products? That's right, Built Oregon. I told you up at the top, 
Built Oregon has a new accelerator class. If you're not familiar with Built Oregon, they are really the, the hub of consumer product activity in the state, not only helping startups and, and early stage companies, but also working with the, the Nikes and the Tillamooks and the Columbias of the world as well to really bring the entire consumer products ecosystem together but they run a particular program called the Built Accelerator that's designed to help companies that are at a really important inflection point kind of figure out how to take it to the next level. And they do that through mentorship, uh, both peer mentorship, where the companies help one another out, the founders help one another out, but also through a, a network of expert mentors that's up over probably 200 mentors by now. But, uh, you know, really experienced folks lending their insights and expertise to these companies. It happens over a four month period and uh, it, it just started this week. So we just learned the name. I mean, I mean, I knew the names. I, got it. I knew behind the scenes, but I want to tell you because you don't know the names maybe. And I want you to keep an eye on these products because it's like I had the chance to meet the folks. They're really great. They're working on some cool stuff. So let's take you through the list of people who are building companies here in Oregon, consumer products that are participating in the Built Oregon Accelerator for this year. Okay. The companies are Brothy, Cultured Kindness, Dappled Tonic, Heck Brewing, Hensi Family Farm, Howl at the Spoon, Gay Awakening Coffee, Gray Duck Ice Cream, La Casa de Mama, Mate Party, Mr. OK's Essentials, Poke Apothecary, Portland Bee Balm, Portland Design Works, Range Revolution, Remco, Ritual Glaze, Trailhead, and Wolves and People. So most of those companies are from Portland, but you re may recognize a few of those names from like Bend, Newburgh, outside of Portland. Uh, but again, thrilled to get the chance to uh, work with this group of people. I hope you take the time to, to check out those folks and the things that they're building. And, uh, you know, at the very least, take the opportunity to support some companies here locally that are building really amazing products. So I'll make sure and link up a post to uh, the reveal that will take you to each and every one of those companies if you want to check them out yourselves. I highly encourage you to do that. And as always, look for these folks at, you know, at farmer's markets or at, you know, your favorite retailer at your new seasons or your market of choice. Some of these folks are even in Whole Foods. And then, of course, they, you know, a number of them have direct consumers. So you may just be able to buy that way as well. But looking forward to working with them. Uh, super excited. To, to get those brands out there more and, and help promote them and get them the mentorship they need. Really excited. Like, it's good to have the energy going. Like, I, stuff's happening. And, uh, and I hope you're feeling it too. Because uh, from my perspective, there's a lot of stuff going on. And, and, and it's all pretty good. I hope you're doing well. Hope you're hanging in there. And until we get the chance to chat again, please keep up the good work. What's that? You need even more news? I got another video for you right here.